Good morning, it's Dean C Performance. We were at the shop Monday morning and I'm about to get to work on Jim Chevelle again. I am going to finish up under the engine bay right now. Um, basically gonna fix the throttle cable length that's it's a mile long. It takes kind of a sharp bend over there and then it was tucked down and up and over. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of the firewall where it's coming out kind of on an angle and tuck it down in between the back two runners and then kind of come out either between the back two runners or the next runner up. It'll hide the cable a little bit, but it'll also give it a little more of a smooth um, curve. I also took off this if you want to call it the PCV for the valve cover. Um, I have some plugs that I could wedge into there, seals that one off. Then the back one, you could see it's basically kinked. The actual PCV line is actually kinked. Um, so I will get rid of that. And then I gotta follow it to under the intake, of course, right? I chose the best one um, goes probably yep yeah so it's kink there too so it's actually not really doing anything um, I'll get that off put a cap on it and then I will most likely take that hose not that hose but I'll put a hose route it around to a catch can and same for this side I'll take a hose and route it over to a catch can um, then probably going to do the fuel line up here. I'm going to get rid of this long, pretty sure it's aluminum fuel line where it connects with a bunch of rubber clamps down there somewhere. I don't know, those are all the transmission lines. There it is, stubbing out of the frame where the factory line comes out of the frame. So I'm going to use a compression AN fitting on there, come up to the regulator. I'm gonna take the regulator off that fender, inner fender, whatever you wanna call it, and mount it probably to this inner fender. Um, I'm going to get rid of all these rubber lines. Then I will feed the regulator here. And then from the regulator, oops, feed the regulator. And then feed the rail from the other side of the regulator to this side of the rail. Leave the crossover and then uh, deadhead this side of the rail. So the return will come down and I'll have to find a spot to put the return so it's not near the headers and all that stuff. I may try to tuck it into the frame rail um, where the factory line is. I may not have enough room, but it does wiggle. So I might have enough room to get a, it feels like I have enough room, but I don't know. Try to get a six through there. Um, but I won't be able to do that until I get it on the lift, which I can't do until I move Jonathan's truck. <sighs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get to work on the fuel lines and throttle cable. Then everything out here is pretty much done. Um, I already got all the Holly stuff figured out that how I'm going to do it. So, this is the wideband sensor here which they always give you plenty of extra on it but we will tuck it back behind the motor zip tie it up good so it's not gonna drop on the header or nothing um yeah i'm gonna get to work so real quick i got the cable routed how i want it now it's under the intake and then when i went to shorten it i noticed if you look right there you see that big groove that's the cable cutting into the adapter um, like the tensioner piece or whatever 
so it was definitely grinding on it and then i noticed this bracket was actually oh, let me turn a little bit this bracket was actually pointed up so the cable was coming in a direction like this rather than in line so i took a pair of pliers and i twisted it it's really loose um which i don't know if this is the right bracket this side bracket i don't know if that's the right one i imagine it's, it's the same one but it only has one bolt hole and then a tab and the tab doesn't sit you can see the tab's not sitting on the bracket um it's like a carriage bolt, I guess. So I don't know, that's a little weird. I'll try and tighten it a little more. Hopefully it doesn't want to just spin the bracket back up. But yeah, that was probably a big reason why the pedal felt so hard to pull. But I got it all undone. I got to pull the, the actual cable out and shorten it, put it all back together and throttle cable will be done okay so i got the regulator off all of the lines are off i deadheaded that side this side already has a six on it and then down there you can kind of see it poking out of the frame that's the compression to 6an so everything out here is a part um that I am taking apart. Uh, I also, I cut the old return line. You can see it there, kind of down there. Um, just so that when I pull it out, I don't flail it around and hit something. So, now, we're moving inside, which I already have the old heater harness pulled through. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the column down. I'm gonna take the two nuts off Drop the column down, but you can see this is where people go drastically wrong is just putting grounds everywhere. Um, I don't know what this goes to. Probably the gauges, but you got that one there. I took this panel off. It's right there. Um, and then you've got your typical giant bundle of wire, you know, just tucked in there. Then we got to undo the brake switch, the heater plug over there, but you could kind of see it's a spaghetti nightmare. Um, I already pulled all of these off of the fuse box. I cut the holly wires from this ground. I got to take this ground off because this is not a ground. There's the Dakota Digital, and it's held in by one zip tie right there. So it flops around and makes a bunch of noise. So I am going to drop the column. I'm going to pull the gauge cluster out. Uh, hopefully it just comes out, disconnect the wiper motor, the heater switch. And I'm not sure if that cigarette lighter is actually hooked up. Oh, it is actually a cigarette lighter. Don't think it's any good anymore, but it might be. Um, yeah, so, yep, I'll be at it. All right, so the dash harness, if that's what you want to call it, because it's basically the fuse box, loops over the steering column and just controls like the radio, the heater, all that stuff. It basically is just this section is completely out fuse box hole now that harness there is the rear harness which uh i haven't looked at yet but i think it goes behind this yeah there it is right there so it goes behind the padding underneath the carpet yep uh, at least they put it on top of the dynamat um because the car does have dynamat i found out but i got the headlight dimmer out that's gone. These are the, those power steering seat wires, uh, which I have to look at that. 
but I took the trim sill out, I took the kick panel off, and what I ended up, basically what happens is when you take all these upper screws out, the pad just comes off, which is pretty simple. Um, but you get to see kind of other hidden gems inside. Uh, these are your defroster vents, and they are broke, uh, where they mount to the dashboard and cracked. Um, so it kind of pushes the dash pad up a little bit, and you can't really push down on it but I took that bolt out that didn't have a bolt that bolt there and then there's two there's one down there and one on the other side in the same spot and this whole dash slides forward or back I should say so that allowed me to get the headlight switch off which in reality you can reach through here it's just a little tight um, then the other piece was this duct here that comes up and over to this vent. It's been duct taped and it's cracked right here. It's got a big old crack in it. Um, so I will probably look for, yeah, you can see it's broke right there where the duct tape is. I'm going to look for... Um, and I know they sell it. I believe this is three inch. Oof. She brittle. Um, just a three inch duct like on Amazon and that'll be a new piece in there. So, and I would, I would imagine they left that screw out because, or was it that screw? Hmm. Yeah, it was that screw there that they left out. This one was in, that one was left out. Um, most likely because the duct was there. So you just have to think it through. You have to put the screw in first. Not a big deal. Um, so yeah, I am going to take the key. Also, they did not hook up the neutral safety switch, which they removed it from the shifter. So the car always started in uh, any gear. Uh, Jeez any gear because they left it on the column back here that's your backup and neutral safety um so you had no reverse lights and no neutral safety so what i'll do is i'll route those under the carpet to the shifter um i'll probably loosen the front of this bracket and feed them up where the cable comes up i already ordered the two switches for this shifter um yeah, that's, okay, so, see the bracket, the shifter wiggles pretty good, and then I just noticed that those two bolts, I would be willing to bet, oh, all four, all four, I'd be willing to bet these are not bolts, they're most likely self-tappers, so, yeah, okay, not getting carried away. Well, there's no bolt in the back of the shifter either. It doesn't really have a lot of movement there, but yeah, it's got that bolt back there. Okay. Well, we can live with some things, maybe. Um, yeah, so that's the Dakota Digital. The, these are ground, which is a mile long, again. And then... This is for the dimmer switch, which again, mile long, mind you. This was mounted mm, right here, basically in this area right here. And your light switch is right here. So a dimmer wire shouldn't have to go that far to get to those terminals, which I think the dimmer terminal is like one of the closest ones. But I mean, obviously, you got to tie it into the harness. Um, but you don't need that much wire. And a lot of this wire is just massive and kind of sticking out. You can see again, like all the broken strands on that one. It's not really good. These ones are all their sending units. So those are fine. Oh, here's some more. Then you got really heavy gauge. This is fuel sender. All the broken strands on here. So there's only I mean, if we were to look at this, it's like three, two or three strands in there. I can't 
Man, the camera picks it up better than my own eyes can. Yeah, I'd say three, three. We'll call it four. We'll, we'll give them credit for four. But this one, you stripped a inch of wire off. You know. So if these two touch each other, it, it just gives you a false reading. So I'm going to get rid of all of these. Even the speed that went to the holly. You know, it's probably a 12 gauge wire or 14 might be a 14 but that's too it's it's too big you know stripped a ton of it off and you just jammed it in there so kind of ditzy um but i'll get rid of all of those yeah the tack wire is the same way big heavy gauge wire that's the tack wire that has a bunch of broken strands too so big heavy gauge wire so I'll get rid of all of those. These are all the power and accessory and ground. Green is just in there just to have fun because it's not actually hooked up to anything. One end to one end. So it's in there just, just to take up space for that giant pregnant tape wrap job that's done right here. Which there's... Alright, see? Here's an issue. I'm not gonna open the truck now. I'm gonna try to unwrap this. Yeah, there's the end right there. Okay. So let's see what was done here. Nope, that's just an extra piece of wire or tape, whatever it is. There it is. I already see the blue butt connector. There it is. Ugh. Okay, I see what they did. They tied two grounds, the fuel ground and the regular ground, which could be why. I'm pretty sure that's why his fuel gauge doesn't read right. Um, so you can't split ohms, which I know that's not ohms, but that might have something to do with it. I know this. Da I know his dash. Like up here, red like 9.7, this red 12 and a half, the holly red 10. So you've got a bunch of different voltages going on. Um, so this is just a shielding for the cool oil center wire because that's a 5 volt. So you just kind of take it and wrap it around. This is not flailing everywhere. So that's that one. Awesome. Which I'll probably end up taking those out, cutting them down, just because. And this is for the switches, which again, this one's not horribly long, but it is pretty daggone long. You know, and the switch was mounted right here, like right next to the box. So there's that switch, and then there is another switch. Which Hmm. Oh, right here. I think this is for the odometer. Um, because it just kind of goes up into the back of the dash right there, and that is in the fuel gauge. Oh, that's weird. It's in the fuel gauge. So I'm not really sure. I don't know. Anyways. All right, well, to get the rear harness out, you actually have to take the bumper off, um, which on a 70 Chevelle, it's not the easiest of tasks, but there's four bolts inside, two bolts that go through that panel. Uh, oh, and then two bolts up 
from behind the license plate and then you have to carefully kind of roll it out and lift it up the top brackets make it really difficult to roll it out because they sit underneath this big pinch weld so but i got it out uh, i started laying out the new harness we got the tail lights for it but they're actually going to go on the bumper but i just got everything back here um and then the factory harness is gone where it went through right there that little black blob what is that hey it's boo boo oh man okay so it went through that little black slit right there um and then it came through the black blob and kind of went down under the carpet under the seat uh, the carpet is glued down completely so made it really difficult to get it out i had to actually unbolt the side of the seat lift it and like shove my arm along it to get it unglued from the carpet the carpet but i got it out that was actually the hardest part of it all um so there is all the factory harness, uh, most of the fuel lines that are coming out, I gotta get that return out. I gotta drop the tank to change the lines. I'm gonna do that afterwards. Um, but I grabbed the back harness, dropped it on the floor, but I need to start kind of measuring it. Uh, and then I can loom it and stick it in the car. But this one's long enough, the babble of babble. So I'm going to start on that and that'll be in the next video. Everything's starting to go back in the car. Um, so for this one, I appreciate you watching, like, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified, leave me a comment. Have a good day.